Hey YouTube, what's up? Uh, long time no see. I'm out here tonight in Capitol Reef, well next to Capitol Reef National Park. Um, I'm in a tiny house, Airbnb, and I figured I'd uh, try to record a YouTube video along with an attempt to capture an image with these bad boys here, which are two Astro modified DSLRs. Uh, I got them modified by Spencer's camera, and I have identical Rockinon 135 F2 lenses to go with them. They're both HA modified. One's a Canon 6D and one, I believe is a Canon R6 and they are both full frame. They both have the same pixel size with the same lens, with the same mod. Um, one, the Canon R6 is slightly better than the other, but um, they're gonna be almost identical setups in terms of image scale and everything else. So I figured it would be really cool to see what I could do with uh, two systems running at once instead of one. So that's gonna be the, uh, the experiment tonight. My goal, is for the next two nights I'm going to try to capture a deep mosaic of the Orion constellation. Uh, it's an image I've wanted to do for a long time with the modded DSLR at 135 because um, I want to be able to get Barnard's loop, the big uh, nebula around the head of Orion and everything else in between. So this will be kind of the perfect setup to do it with and I should have good conditions tonight as well. Um, being in Capitol Reef or near Capitol Reef, it's super, super dark. Capitol Reef is one of the uh, big five national parks in Utah, which all have pretty insanely dark skies, which I'm pretty lucky to live relatively close to here. We've got almost a little less than a first quarter moon tonight. I don't know if that's going to be a problem. We'll find out. To combat the first quarter moon, which will only get worse tomorrow night, I'm going to shoot every panel of the mosaic each night to kind of average out the differences between the panels between nights and hopefully avoid any kinds of gradients or stuff like that. And you know, we're also gonna be taking flats to deal with that problem as well, but it should be a, uh, a super cool little experiment and excited to bring you guys along to show you an image if I get one. Hey guys, so I'm back in the tiny house. Right now I have everything set up and I'm running both cameras at once and it was kind of difficult to get them both set up to match the framing, but I just want to show you what I'm using to control the cameras and what my plan is for actually imaging. So at 135 millimeters in full frame, I can fit the whole Orion constellation in like a three panel panorama. So that's the plan for tonight. I'm going to be able to shoot till about 2 a.m. 2.30 a.m. and it's 7.20 p.m. right now. So that gives us 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. It gives us seven hours per night. So I'm gonna divide that evenly amongst the three panels and repeat the procedure for the two nights. And hopefully that should give a pretty good image. I should get Barnard's loop and the nebula around the head of Orion. As for what I'm using to control both the cameras, it's actually kind of a simple setup. Um, what I have is a USB hub and I'm running both cameras on USB with the USB hub into my capture laptop, which is running two instances of Backyard EOS. And I just have them right now looping 30 second exposures at F2 ISO 1600. So I'm gonna have a huge number of frames by the end of the night, but since I'm shooting at F2, that's what we want. We want as many frames as possible that are properly exposed. And that just so happens to be done in 30 seconds here where I'm at. Um, the mount I just have running off the hand controller right now. I could potentially automate it with plate solving and whatnot in SGP and run the mount via some ASCOM driver, but for simplicity's sake, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna wake up and go outside when I have to switch panels. So yeah, that's the plan. I'm gonna get about two hours per panel uh, per night per camera and by the end I should have like 28 hours of data which hopefully will produce something great. All right guys, so it's the morning after the shoot and um, things went pretty much to plan, which was good. Um, 
I did end up taking shorter exposures than I thought because the moon was pretty bright. So um, 30 seconds, size 1600 at f2 for both cameras left me with 260 subframes per camera per panel. So times three times two means I'm somewhere in the ballpark of like 1500 subs per night. And I get to add another 1500 subs tomorrow night. So we're gonna be sitting around 3000 subs, which I don't know how easy that's gonna be to process. But um, yeah, for the rest of today, I'm gonna be going into Hanksville and Capitol Reef doing some hikes and then come back around sunset and uh, hopefully do it all again tonight. Hey guys, so I made it back home and the two nights I spent out in the Capitol Reef were not the end of the capturing of the mosaic. So I actually decided to shoot a little bit of hydrogen alpha data from the backyard off my balcony just to get the head of Orion to pop a bit more. So the, uh, the modified R6 I'm using actually has a little clip-in filter that lets me drop in filters and I have a little seven nanometer hydrogen alpha filter from Spencer's camera that I just dropped in to shoot the extra HA data. And that helped, I think, quite a bit make the image pop more. So all said and done, there's probably about 33 hours of data that went into this mosaic. Most of it was shot out at a Capitol Reef and then the next bit from my backyard here in Salt Lake. I didn't use a dual camera setup and I didn't shoot on my AVX because it broke while I was out in Capitol Reef. Um, as all my mounts tend to break. So <laughs> this, the Skywatcher Star Adventure held my camera for the last night, but the actual processing of the mosaic was very tough. Um, I'll show you the before and after, um, after stacking how bad the gradients were versus after gradient removal. And Astro Pixel Processor is actually the program I use to handle all my mosaic processing and background extraction. And it actually did like a surprisingly good job um, considering how dynamic the gradients were in the image, but I think it would have been a lot worse if I didn't capture every panel every night because of the near first quarter moon that was out while I was shooting. So going forward with mosaics, I think it's probably best idea to do every panel every night unless you're shooting hydrogen alpha and it doesn't really matter. But yeah, it, it turned out, um, well, it looked pretty horrific after I stacked it and uh, <laughs> stacking it was no small feat. So. All the pre-processing was done in PixInsight. I uh, had like 2,800 subframes plus about 300 subframes from the hydrogen alpha because I'm doing very short exposures at F2. And this took like two or three days to actually pre-process and stack all the frames. And my methodology for stacking them was I stacked um, each panel for each night for each camera. So since I was shooting three panels, for two nights with two cameras, that's two times two times three, leaving me with 12 final stacked images for the mosaic blend at the end. Um, three from each camera and three from each night. So 12 in total, um, which was quite a difficult process. The uh, PixInsight batch pre-processing scripts weren't really working that well on the data, so I manually calibrated everything, which added to the complexity, but it worked out and I'm really, really satisfied with the image and hope you guys enjoy it too.